Now for a strange story out of rural Coffee County. Residents there say they've seen unusual looking creatures in the distance. Something's going on in the woods. Folks in the area have heard a loud shriek at night, but it didn't sound like a coyote. They're not dogs, they're not coyotes. What could it be? When I seen them big red eyes, she said uh, we were out of there. Oh my God. Hey there, what's up? My name is Kira and welcome to your worst nightmare. Welcome to my YouTube channel. <laughs> it's funny, I always get those two things mixed up. I've always thought that cryptids were pretty cool. For those of you who don't know, cryptids are creatures or beings that have a lot of reported sightings, but no one can actually prove that they exist. Like Bigfoot, Mothman, the Loch Ness Monster. They don't even have to be supernatural. We just can't prove they exist, so they basically become urban legends. It's just kind of funny to think that a bunch of people maybe saw a glimpse of a bear in the woods one day and they were like, that was no bear. That was definitely some guy. He's seven feet tall and he's got hair all over. And did you see the size of his feet? Like you literally just described everyone's deranged uncle. What's so exciting about that? Even though Bigfoot is just some prepper who needs a Dollar Shave Club subscription, urban legends and cryptids can be pretty creepy. Most of my favorites come from the ocean which is why I have a crippling existential fear of the ocean. So since I have a fascination with cryptids, I thought it would be fun if I designed some of my own, and I'm also tasking myself with coming up with goofy names and urban legends for each of them. And just to challenge myself even more, the basis of my designs will come from random prompt generators on the internet. And just to make it even harder on myself, it is almost spoopy day, so I'm also going to try to make the designs as creepy as possible. So let's go ahead and generate some prompts and see what kind of ideas I can come up with. And I also want to quickly mention that this video is sponsored by Skillshare, but we'll hear more from Skillshare a little bit later. Let's go. You will never suspect that I just moved two inches over to my desk. Wow. So I think I'm going to do one that is purely a creature, one that is humanoid, and one that is an entity. So my idea is to generate three different animals to base their appearance off of, and then a location in which they dwell, and then some kind of supernatural power and ability for them to use to haunt said location. I said they don't have to be supernatural and spoopy, but I kind of want mine to be, so they're gonna be spoopy. All right, so I have my random animals generator, and I'm just gonna generate our first set of animals. <laughs> so we have a bear, a boar, and a crow. God, I'm already imagining what it's gonna look like and <laughs> I'm not gonna sleep tonight. All right, let's generate a location for this bad boy. So for this guy, we got Lexington, Edgartown, and Stanhope. And I think I'm gonna go with Edgartown just because we have a crow as one of our animals and like crows, Edgar Allan Poe, spoopy. All right, and lastly, we have our power for this guy see what it's gonna be. So we got time manipulation and genie and I think I'm gonna go with genie like it grants wishes because that's definitely something really hilarious that lots of people from all over the US would go and hunt down to try to get three wishes. Although I feel like that's a little bit too positive so I might put time manipulation into the mix as well just to make it extra spoopy. In cautionary tales there must be consequences for greed. Next up we have our humanoid cryptid and the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to mix the animals with like a humanoid form so something along the lines of a Sasquatch or a Wendigo which I think can be really terrifying so oh this is really cool we have an Argali a Puma and a Mustang I'm already trying to wrap my head around how I'm going to fit all of these on a human body but anytime you have a face that's like a horse or a ram I'm immediately terrified. Let's see where this monstrosity lives. For this one, I'm just gonna go with the first one, which is Walla Walla US. I have no idea where that is, but it sounds promising for a spooky creature like this. Okay, so for the supernatural powers, we got Dimension Hopper, Death Defier, and Vampire, which is all insane. Imagine a creature like this being all of those things. I'm thinking definitely it's gonna be giving me Wendigo vibes. There's gonna be some really gruesome urban legends about this guy. All right, let's generate an entity. So for the entity, I don't know exactly how I'm going to design them. I think I'm going to leave it be more abstract and maybe even something that doesn't quite make sense. 
if that makes sense. Maybe something that's not quite on our plane of existence because I feel like there's a lot of spooky stories and like creepy pastas about stuff like that and I want to create something similar. So let's find some animals that are going to make this horrifying. Oh, <laughs> why did these turn out so cute? This is just cute. Although it can also be really terrifying if I design it the right way. We have a colt, which is like a small horse, I guess. Am I stupid? That's a horse, right? A hedgehog. Hedgehogs are probably one of the cutest animals on the planet, so I don't know how I'm gonna make that scary. And then a bat, which can be cute or scary depending on who you ask. <laughs> But I think they're cute. Let's see where this thing lives. So we got Bessemer, Harlingen, and I don't know how to pronounce the last one. Let's ask Google. Ypsilanti. Ypsilanti. That last one just kind of sounds more interesting, so I think that's the town I'm gonna go with. Ooh, these are good. Okay. So the first one is that they have a demon form. It can transform into a demon, which I think is pretty on brand for an entity. And then, Plague Lord, which means they can spread creeping clouds of disease and illness via touch and the air. It honestly sounds like something there would be a legend about from like 200 years ago or something. Like imagine a creepy little hedgehog horse bat walking around and it can turn into a demon and it can spread disease. I feel like I've created something I no longer have control over. All right, these are horrifying, so let's get designing. My first step is normally to make some thumbnails and rough designs just to get my concept going, so let's get out my sketchbook and create some nightmare fuel. <laughs> So hello, this is obviously not my sketchbook. I was going to do some initial sketches in my sketchbook to get some rough ideas out, and I kind of did, but they all sucked, so I just found it easier to start digital so that I could actually edit the designs a little better. Also, I am so sorry, but the footage for this first cryptid got absolutely nuked, so unfortunately I had to time lapse some of it, like a whole bunch, but I promise it does get better later and the other two cryptids are fine. So I want to share a few ideas about the lore of these creatures with you guys, but I also want to talk a bit about some of the difficulties that I encountered in the design process, so I'm going to do that first. While generating random towns for them initially sounded like a good idea, I probably should have been more specific or even broader and generated more like a climate or a habitat or rural towns because most of the places the generator gave me were cities that didn't have a lot of woods. And while it's not impossible for a cryptid to be wandering around a city, it's a little less spoopy and more strange. I just think it limited the overall vibe a good bit because I didn't have urban locations in mind for any of these whenever I was imagining them. I also feel like it's a little harder to come up with mysterious lore when the best hiding place for the creature would be the dumpster behind the Rite Aid. It just demystifies the creature a lot and makes them feel a lot more urban legendy. Like it's harder to believe they even exist. I don't know, it's just my take on it. I think I just have a bias towards the woods. So for this first one, I definitely encountered that problem. This fella can be found in and around Edgartown, which is a town in Martha's Vineyard in Massachusetts, which for those of you who don't know, is a pretty ritzy place. There's a lot of historic houses and yacht events, so it's a bit of a tourist destination, but I think some of these traits can work to my advantage. So the basic lore for this creature, which some of the locals refer to as Aram Ursa, is that it's a creature that both terrorizes Edgar Town and attracts tourists to it. Since this lovely beast is part crow, and according to legend, crows have an affinity for shiny things, our cryptid survives on a diet of gold, silver, and other precious metals and jewelry. I thought it would also be a fun play on the bear steal honey trope since honey is sometimes compared to gold. This creature is often blamed, for example, when an old wealthy woman's favorite brooch goes missing, or when Chandler lies to his parents about it taking the gold cufflinks they bought for him, but he actually just thinks they're ugly and refuses to wear them. In the lore of this creature, gold and other precious metals are what powers its ability to grant wishes. In order to give people the treasure of wishes, it must consume treasure, preferably treasure that has time and memory attached to it. Airtight logic, right? I'm really making this up as I go along. According to legend, if you want to get the traditional three wishes from our wicked friend, you have to possess one of its golden feathers. The creature can only have one master at once, but there is a time limit to how long you're allowed to hold your wishes. Since the creature also has time manipulation as an ability, the wishes have a catch. 
Like I said, there must be consequences for greed, so since the creature has the ability to manipulate time, the wisher can only wish for changes to the past, particularly specific important life choices, like choosing to pursue a love that got away or choosing to bet on the right horse at the racetrack. However, the wisher has no idea how their wish will impact their life in the long run, and there are often adverse effects when the creature does grant wishes because of the butterfly effect. Or pretending science doesn't exist here. Overall, this creature isn't very threatening, but lots of people get lost or go missing looking for it. There are also some rather spooky rumors of the creature flying around above yachts at night trying to snatch lights on the vessels since it's mistaking them for gold. This leaves poor tourists on the water spooked with no light. Although many are skeptical of these tales and question if it's just the result of late nights with too much wine. As the allure of life-changing wishes attract more wealthy tourists to the town, the creature just gets more potential for a tasty golden meal. As far as the actual design goes, I tried to balance the features of the creature as much as I could. Of course, the bear is pretty dominant, but I tried to mix the anatomy with the boar and the crow enough so that the individual animals weren't immediately recognizable, and I think that worked out pretty well. The gold feathers were a last minute addition, but I definitely like how it ties everything together. It definitely makes the lore more mystical. And with that, our first cryptid is done. This video has been sponsored by Skillshare. For those of you who don't know, Skillshare is a massive online learning community that offers classes in creative topics like drawing, character design, and video editing. Skillshare's classes are convenient to access, easy to watch at your own pace, and since their platform is focused on learning, it's completely ad-free. Full classes average at around 60 minutes, so it's easy to fit them into any schedule, and since their classes also have a range of difficulty, you can jump in no matter what level of experience you have. Plus, Skillshare is constantly releasing new premium classes, so you'll never run out of things to learn. I've talked about it before on the channel, but if you're interested in character illustration, I highly recommend Gabriel Piccolo's class, Character Illustration, Drawing Faces, Figures, and Clothing. This class is filled with great information about drawing warm-ups, expressions, and posing your characters, which is super helpful for me because it's something that I'm kind of rusty with at the moment, so it's been great to brush up. So I'm sure you guys would get a lot out of this class, and it's also a wonderful introduction to Skillshare's platform, so if you would like to try it out and watch it for free, the first 1,000 people who sign up using my link in the description will get a free one-month trial of Skillshare's premium membership. It'll give you an opportunity to watch a few classes, explore your creativity, deepen your existing passions, and learn some new skills. A huge thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring another one of my videos. If you're interested, remember to sign up for a free trial. Now, back to the cryptid designs. <laughs> Next up is our humanoid cryptid, and oh boy did that decision present its own set of design challenges. You can see me struggling to get any kind of idea out in the beginning here, but eventually I was able to get in the groove a bit. This creature is referred to as the Moonslayer, and it is the terrifying scourge of the ski town of Beckenbridge, Colorado. I had initially planned for this one to be in Walla Walla, but the cooler climate just worked a bit better for my idea, so I switched it. While the slopes and the sites of Beckenbridge are beautiful, Beautiful, the threat of the Moonslayer looms over the town at night. During the day, the threat is little more than an afterthought, but at night, strange and terrifying things tend to happen. Flashes of silhouettes appear and disappear on security tapes, planters and furniture moves, and people go missing. Firstly, resort staff and the authorities tend to find half-eaten carcasses of large animals on the slopes of the ski lodges and even in more public places after the night of a full moon. There are no known predators in the area capable of eating such large game, and additionally, the carcass is always drained of its blood. If that isn't spooky enough, several resort guests have also gone missing in the last several years. It's always the same story. They leave the comfort of the resort in the middle of the night under a full moon and venture onto the slopes. The story always ends the same way. Their bodies are found a week later, clearly frozen to death. However, their bodies are also always drained of their blood, with wounds resembling bite marks. Of course, the vampire rumors began immediately, but the authorities can't make heads or tails of the deaths. However, there have been several reported sightings of a large man-looking creature folks have only seen at night. Some say it's a cougar, others say it resembles a horse or a ram, but all the stories have some things in common. It has enormously sharp teeth and seems to have an almost human level of intelligence. 
Despite no one placing much weight on the alleged creature sightings, the resorts have taken precautions for increased security on their grounds at night and limited skiing during full moons. One resort even offered a reward to anyone who can successfully kill the creature, but hunting parties have come back empty-handed every time, some saying they shot the creature and it just disappeared. Since the precautions began, there have been fewer mysterious disappearances, but full moons always offer some tragedy. In terms of design, I tried to give him a pretty spooky look. Since he's a death defier, I imagined that there would be a lot of nasty scars and decaying flesh from where hunters have tried to shoot him and where other animals have tried to attack him. I also based his design on how locals would describe him rather than how he actually looks, so an exaggerated amalgamation of horns, tails, and long creepy limbs. I also almost gave him an extra arm for the spookiness factor, but ultimately toned it down because it was getting to be too much. I also had such a hard time with this one combining all of the creatures onto a humanoid form, like adding four different things to combine definitely made this one probably the most challenging of all. Just the silhouette was weird, which is why you saw me at first going in and drawing the silhouette out itself. That helped me a ton with trying to fit all the like weird limbs and stuff just getting a good silhouette down that definitely led me in the right direction with the rest of the design it's not perfect it's like definitely a little rough it's a little bit like derivative too which i'm not the biggest fan of but i think for one of my first designs it's like this it's not so bad i just definitely struggled but i think the color job saved it for the most part the one thing that I wish I could have included more of but didn't really find a way to integrate it as much into the design was the dimension hopping thing, but I imagine that he just kind of can teleport around and snatch up his victims that way. I wish I had figured out something better, but that's pretty much the extent of it. He's definitely very Wendigo, but I think the confusing blend of creatures work for him. And with that, he is done. And I have done my duty with contributing a terrifying creature to the world this Halloween season. This last one was definitely a challenge since the animals my generator came up with were so freaking cute, but I think I was able to pull it together in the end. This last creature is referred to by the Ypsilanti locals as the Borsog and can be spotted flying over the city or scurrying in empty playgrounds on particularly foggy mornings. It gets its name from its appearance, resembling a mixture of a bat, a young horse, and a hedgehog. Actually, I just got its name from my brother who literally just combined the words bat, horse, and hog into one word, and it kind of stuck. The Borsog's main abilities are to turn into a demon form and spread disease both through physical touch and the air. So I took that quite literally and made its demon form a little airborne pathogen looking dude, and I actually really like how it came out looking. In Ypsilanti, when the weather turns cold and flu season comes, folks say this little guy is to blame, particularly when it comes to school-age kids passing nasty bugs around. Legend has it children walking to school on foggy mornings will sometimes see a glimpse of this mysterious creature and follow it, exposing themselves to its fog and catching a runny nose and sometimes worse. Since it mostly lures curious children, adults don't believe the numerous sightings and consider them to be tall tales, but some adults quietly believe the sightings too since they've also caught glimpses and cold from the Borsog. However, rumor has it, bundling up, wearing a heavy coat, and wearing a scarf over your nose can prevent you from catching a cold from this little guy, which is also a tactic mothers use to get their kids to actually wear warm clothes during the cold months. The Borsog itself is a playful and mischievous little entity and delights in tormenting the locals. It's also rumored to impersonate or pester people's cats and other pets, and while the adults don't believe it exists, it's also notorious for stealing fruit and veggies from home gardens, although that last one is probably just ordinary pests. Although the flu can be some serious business, this creature is comparatively a lot less dangerous than our previous cryptid. It mostly serves as a fun urban legend that gets a little extra attention on Halloween night. However, most local children have at least one memory of spotting a strange creature on a cool, foggy morning. In terms of design, this cutie was pretty straightforward. I tried to focus on a design that would be cute instead of super creepy and something that might entice children. I also tried to focus on on again combining the animals to make them look somewhat seamless. I admit though the wings look a lot more like dragon wings than bat wings but you know it happens it kind of gives a somewhat creepier factor. Overall I think the appearance is pretty cute but still captures the idea of a troublemaking diseased bat pretty well which is you know the goal. 
And with that, all of our cryptids are done. These are the finished results. The limitations were definitely challenging in terms of visual design and crafting a legend for each of them, but I did my best to make them look kind of spoopy. Let me know what you think of the final designs and if you have any better ideas for the lore and how to combine these creatures. And of course, please let me know if you want me to do this again and turn this into a series. And let me know which one of these was your favorite and which one scares you the most. I hope you guys enjoyed the design process and I hope it didn't give you too much nightmare fuel. Some nightmare fuel, just not too much. I definitely enjoyed working on these. I always have such a fun time doing character designs. So if you want me to do more original cryptids based on random generators, let me know in the comments down below because I would love to continue the series. It was a super fun time. I love designing creepy stuff. It gives me a break from designing just regular characters and allows me to be a little bit more creative and channel my inner spooky kid. On that note, I hope everyone has a wonderful Halloween. Do something to enjoy the season this weekend. Hang out with your friends, dress up in costume, or if watching a spooky movie at home is more your cup of tea, then do that. Just remember to enjoy this holiday and this season because it only comes once a year and it's a lot of fun and you deserve it. If you made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching and if you want to support me even more, consider subscribing. It's a little button. It's down there. You know where it is just press the button and you can also help me out even even more by liking and commenting and turning on notifications and all the youtube stuff you guys you watch youtube you know about the youtube stuff remember to show skillshare some love and check out their classes they've been a really big supporter of mine for a long time and when you do it helps me out even more so thank you so much to everyone who has done so but that's it for me for this week i will see you guys next time and if you'll excuse me i am very busy i have to go and prepare for the all Hallows Eve feast. <laughs> They're gonna eat me. Send help.